My name is Dr. Michelle Gerber. I'm a naturopathic doctor and a licensed professional midwife. HPV is, what those letters stand for is human papilloma virus. So it's a virus that um, can infect lots of different places. Usually what we're concerned about when we're talking about HPV, when people get a test and it comes back on HPV positive, is the kind of HPV that can eventually lead to cervical cancer, like the kind that's found on a pap smear when they do that kind of test. Um, that kind of HPV is, so a virus is just like a really small infectious agent like a bacteria, uh, but it's, so it's infecting the cervix and if left completely untreated and if the body doesn't take care of it over a long period, of, typically a long period of time, it can slowly lead to cervical cancer. Um, in the beginning stages, sometimes it's just HPV and what it does is it causes the cells in the cervix to slowly kind of start to look weird and then eventually they'll look so weird that they are cancerous. So when you have a pap smear and it detects HPV and it's also detecting whether those cells have started to become weird due to the HPV. So when they say it's mild, so you might hear the words mild dysplasia or moderate dysplasia or severe dysplasia, that word just means they've started to look kind of funny. It doesn't mean cancer. Cancer is sort of all the way down the road from that. Um, but that's why we do pap smears is to check for those sorts of things as a screening tool so we know long before it's cancer that that stuff is there and what we can do about it. From a naturopathic perspective, almost anything is, any kind of disease that we have is something that the body is going to do the healing itself. And our job is to, our job is to remove obstacles to the body's ability to cure and give the body everything that it needs in order to make that healing possible. Like, I always give people the example of when you cut your finger and you put a Band-Aid on it, the Band-Aid doesn't fix the cut. It's your body knitting itself back together that does the healing. We just clean it so there's nothing that's getting in the way and put something on it perhaps to help enhance the healing. But ultimately, it's the body that does the work. So it's no different with HPV. And depending on your age, if you're younger, uh, in any perspective, conventional or naturopathic or whatever, um, it's kind of a watch and wait situation if the changes to the cells aren't too severe. So the, it, conventionally, they will retest you every so often to make sure that your body is doing just that, that it's healing it. From a naturopathic perspective, there's a lot more that we can do besides just watch and wait. Um, and certainly, even if you're on the sort of severe end of the spectrum, where you wouldn't watch and wait, where conventionally they would do things like perhaps um, freezing it or cutting out the cells that have the, the weird sort of uh, nature to them. And naturopathically, there are lots of things we can do to address things in the way that I just said, to remove things that are keeping your body from healing itself and to, to put things in place that enhance that healing ability. So for example, one of the biggest things that keeps your body from being able to heal HPV is if you're a smoker. Now that's a longer um, discussion about how to quit smoking and all of that, but I think it's really important for women to know that there are things in their life that may be more under their control that they can do that have a significant impact on the HPV. So smoking is one of them. Um, I'm going to say for every single condition out there basically that diet is a huge piece of it. What we put into our bodies has an enormous impact on how our immune system functions, on how our cells are able to replicate themselves. and. When we're talking about something that's maybe precancerous, eventually, uh, we're talking about not just getting rid of the virus, which is sort of the, the key issue, but also helping those cells to grow and divide properly. So things that you can do dietarily to help that um, are things like um, eating foods that really emphasize um, folic acid, beta carotene, vitamin C. Um, certainly if you do a Google search on that, you can find a whole list of things that have those kinds of foods in them. But the big ones are dark leafy greens, which are kind of the miracle food for almost everything. So that's things like kale and collards and bok choy and chard and arugula and the list goes on and on. Um, those contain a lot of folic acid in them, which is really important for helping cells to what we call differentiate properly, which means as they're dividing, they're gonna divide into cells that look like cervix cells as opposed to things that look like cancer cells. Um, things that have a lot of beta carotene in them are the sort of orange veggies, um, peppers, yams, squashes, pumpkin, that kind of stuff. 
Um, and then things that have vitamin C are pretty eclectic too. Lots of different fruits and vegetables, not just oranges, which is what we think about. Um, strawberries do, green and red and yellow peppers do. Um, even the dark leafy greens, which have a little bit of everything, have, have some vitamin C in them. So a lot of that, putting those sorts of things in your diet, trying to remove things that really inhibit the immune system, one of the biggest ones being sugar, which is a tough one. Sugar is very addictive. Um, if you are you know, consuming a lot of things that have sugar in them, and that doesn't just mean white sugar, that can mean white flour, like lots of breads and white pastas and white crackers and things like that, that's gonna inhibit your immune system's ability to really get rid of the HPV. Um, that's stuff that uh, I kind of just answered your third question, I think, accidentally, which is things you can do at home. But to me, it's all sort of part and parcel. It all runs together. What I would do in the office for someone that had came to me and said they had HPV is talk to them about all those sort of diet and lifestyle factors, um, some of them which I didn't get into. Uh, stress plays a big impact, a big role in how the immune system functions. Um, and other, there are other things that we talk about, sleep. I mean, all of those things that we just say, oh yeah, those are good things to do. They're not just good things to do. They really do have an impact on our health, both just clinically, meaning I see that happen. And also there are lots of studies about those sorts of things. It is actually quite um, scientifically based that those things impact our abilities to, our ability to heal from things and particularly HPV in this case. Um, in the office, I would talk about things that you can take that would enhance those sorts of nutrients that we just talked about. I usually will prescribe someone um, a, an herbal uh, mixture that is that takes into account all kinds of different herbs that are antiviral and that are pro-immune system health. Um, and then depending on how significant it is, I might also recommend a round of suppositories, meaning things that you actually put up next to the cervix so that you can get things like uh, green tea, which is a very potent sort of antioxidant and can help cells, again, differentiate properly. I might have someone do suppositories of that sort or things that have antiviral properties and herbs in them, that sort of thing. If it's very severe, I might do something called an escherotic treatment, which is, to my knowledge, something that only naturopathic doctors do. It's a it's an alternative to LEAP, which is a conventional procedure that's going to actually cut out cells from the cervix. The reason that we offer it or that I offer it is because as far as we know, it doesn't include any of the risks that LEAP does. Um, LEAP can cause problems with um, fertility issues potentially and issues with pregnancies. And so unless it's uh, a very severe and particular kind of dysplasia, I usually recommend that we do escherotic treatments instead. The way I describe them is they're kind of like giving the cervix a facial. It's a, a sort of slowly stripping off the outer layer of cells. There's no cutting involved. There's no sort of... Um, change to the structure of the cervix. It's just removing some of those cells that might be abnormal and causing the immune system to really pay attention to the area um, and uh, resolve any of the cells that have HPV inside them. So that's more of an in-depth process. It takes five weeks. It's um, two treatments a week basically until it's done, um, but it's very effective. I. I sort of go out on a limb on that one and say that it's it's very rare that I don't see someone either resolve or at least significantly improve, even moderate to severe dysplasia with that particular treatment. So it's but you can't do it by itself. I always tell people that it's great, but it has to include those underlying factors as well because if not, if there are some cells that we don't get that still have the HPV in them, then just like with leap or anything else, it can come back. And so those you have to address it from both perspectives. You want to get rid of the cells that in a gentle way that don't have the um, that have the HPV or the dysplasia, meaning the weirdness present, and you want to so you're removing sort of the obstacles and you're going to put things into your body that are going to help you heal from the inside out. So that's how, and so it depends. Like I said, five weeks is a typical treatment length, but then I usually recommend people to have a repap about three to four months after they've done that to make sure that it really is gone. If you do it right away afterwards, sometimes it still looks like it's kind of healing and it's hard to see, um, and then. Um, after that, if everything's completely resolved, I still recommend that people continue to do those lifestyle things and those internal things for another six months until they see, I mean, they're great things to do your whole life, but at least the next six months to see that you have another clear pap. Um, and then after that, you're pretty much resolved. Um, if you have a more mild dysplasia that you didn't need to do the escherotic treatment for, that can take, um, again, I, I usually suggest people do the internal things that they're doing until they've had two clear paps, and then they can pretty much be um, sure that they've gotten rid of it at, this t at that time. With a small caveat, 
We don't really know 100% if HPV ever 100% goes away or if it just becomes really dormant inside the body. Um, but regardless, as long as the immune system is strong and kind of keeping it under wraps such that we can't detect it anymore, that's, um, we don't know if it's gone or if it's just really dormant, but both of those states are a really good place to be in. So that's where we're aiming for. Well, certainly, like I said, I, I kind of just brushed over a lot of the things that are very important for immune system health, but um, there's a lot to be said for a lot of these things that we just sort of gloss over, like, yes, good diet and exercise and sleep and stress reduction. Those are all good things we should be doing all of the time. But just as an example, for example, for example, stress reduction, I'm talking about things on a regular basis that you're doing, like a daily meditation or walking outside among the trees, if, uh, if you can make that happen. Those things really, there is genuine research about them actually having positive effects on the immune system and on a multitude of diseases, including cancer, which obviously HPV isn't, but it's precancerous. And we know lots of, uh, there's actually quite a large body of evidence about those things effect on um, on those conditions. So I recommend that sort of um, stress reduction, not just saying sort of like giving lip service to it, like you should reduce your stress, but talking about specific things that you can do because that um, sometimes can make the, have the biggest impact of all. So I, I would definitely say that that's um, a really important thing you can do right off the bat.